The Iran-Iraq War, Causes, Course, and Legacy. Welcome to our exploration of the Iran-Iraq War, a pivotal conflict that profoundly shaped the Middle East in the 20th century. Lasting from September 1980 to August 1988, this war was not merely a confrontation between two nations, but a complex interplay of historical grievances, ideological differences, and international involvement. In this video, we delve into the causes, course, and lasting impact of this significant chapter in Middle Eastern history. By understanding this conflict, we can learn valuable lessons about the importance of diplomacy, conflict resolution, and international cooperation in preventing future humanitarian crises. So, let's get started. Chapter 1. Causes of the Iran-Iraq War The Iran-Iraq War began due to long-standing disputes over the strategic Shat al-Arab waterway. This waterway, formed by the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, is crucial for both Iran and Iraq, providing access to the Persian Gulf. Uh, historical events from the Ottoman Empire's dissolution and Western colonial divisions further complicated territorial disputes and long-standing grievances. The 1975 Algiers Agreement aimed to settle border disputes between Iran and Iraq. It placed the border in the center of the Shat al-Arab waterway. Despite its initial success, Iraq abrogated this agreement on September 17, 1980, following Iran's Islamic Revolution led by Ayatollah Khomeini. This led to increased tensions between Iran and Iraq. The Iranian Revolution in 1979 transformed Iran into an Islamic Republic under Shia Islamist governance. This change challenged regional norms and alarmed neighboring Sunni-dominated regimes. Iran's revolutionary zeal and promotion of Shia Islamic ideology posed a perceived threat to Iraq under Saddam Hussein's secular Arab nationalist agenda. External powers played a significant role in escalating tensions. Iraq received support from Gulf states like Saudi Arabia and Kuwait, which were wary of Iran's revolutionary fervor and sought to contain its influence. These states viewed Iraq as a bulwark against the spread of Iranian Shia Islamism. Iran, in turn, found backing from countries like Syria and Libya, which shared ideological affinities and saw Iran as a potential ally against Western dominance and Arab conservatism. The United States and Soviet Union maintained neutral stances but provided military support to their respective allies. The Soviet Union saw Saddam Hussein's regime as a stabilizing force countering Iranian revolutionary ambitions. The United States aimed to contain the spread of Iranian influence and uh, protect its, in its interests in the Gulf region, indirectly supporting Iraq as a buffer uh, against perceived expansionist threats. Chapter 2 Outbreak and Early Battles The Iran-Iraq War erupted on September 20, 1980, when Iraq, led by President Saddam Hussein, launched a sweeping military campaign against Iran. Their targets included critical strategic points like the oil-rich Khuzestan province. In the early days of the war, Iraq's airstrikes and ground invasions set the stage for a series of intense and decisive battles. One such battle was the Siege of Abaddon, which began in October 1980. Iraqi forces encircled the vital oil city, but despite relentless pressure, the Iranian defenders, bolstered by civilian support, managed to lift the siege by September 1981. The Battle of Khorramshahr, starting in September 1980, became infamous as the City of Blood. Although initially overtaken by Iraqi forces, it was heroically recaptured by Iran in May 1982 after months of brutal combat. As 1982 progressed, Iran started to regain its footing. Operation Undeniable Victory, launched in March, marked the beginning of a series of counter-offensives. These operations focused on reclaiming key territories in Khuzestan, showcasing the region's strategic significance. Despite numerous Iraqi attempts, Iranian forces held firm, particularly during the defense of Dezful. Iran's ambitions expanded further with Operation Ramadan in July 1982, targeting the city of Basra. This marked the beginning of a prolonged and grueling phase of the war. Subsequent operations, including Operation Dawn and the Battle of the Marshes, sought control over strategic areas but often ended in stalemates, reflecting the war's grinding nature. A pivotal moment came in February 1986 with the First Battle of al fa where Iranian forces seized the crucial al fa Peninsula, challenging Iraq's control over the Shat al-Arab waterway. The conflict then escalated, 
spilling into urban areas with missile attacks in what became known as the War of the Cities. The tanker war in the Persian Gulf targeting vital oil tankers further raised global concerns about the security of oil supplies. A deeply controversial and tragic aspect of the conflict was Iraq's extensive use of chemical weapons. These included mustard gas and nerve agents, with one of the most notorious incidents occurring in March 1988 in the Kurdish town of Halabja, where thousands of civilians were killed or injured. This clear violation of the 1925 Geneva Protocol, which bans chemical and biological warfare, was met with a muted and inconsistent response from the international community, influenced by the geopolitical complexities of the time. While there were allegations of Iran using chemical weapons, these claims remain less substantiated compared to Iraq's well-documented offenses. The international outcry primarily focused on Iraq's actions, which had severe humanitarian consequences. Amidst the devastation, international organizations such as the Red Cross and Doctors Without Borders provided critical aid, though the suffering, particularly from the chemical attacks, left long-lasting scars on both civilians and soldiers. Chapter 3, Stalemate and Diplomatic Efforts The Iran-Iraq War became a prolonged stalemate due to entrenched trench warfare and the widespread use of chemical weapons by both sides. Despite numerous offensives and counteroffensives, neither Iraq nor Iran could achieve a decisive breakthrough, imposing significant economic, social, and military strains on both nations. International efforts to end the conflict culminated in UN Security Council Resolution 598 in July 1987. This resolution mandated a ceasefire and withdrawal to pre-war boundaries. Initially met with skepticism, both parties eventually embraced the resolution, laying the groundwork for post-war reconstruction and reconciliation. The formal peace agreement was signed on August 20, 1988. The stalemate arose from strategic decisions by both nations. Iraq's early gains were countered by Iran's resilience, leading to a prolonged standoff where neither side gained a decisive advantage. The use of chemical weapons exacerbated the humanitarian crisis and drew international condemnation. Despite these challenges, UN-led diplomacy played a crucial role in achieving peace. Resolution 598 provided the framework for ceasefire and withdrawal, marking a significant step towards resolving the conflict. Key elements included an immediate ceasefire, withdrawal to recognize boundaries, deployment of UN observers to supervise the process, and provisions for prisoner of war release and post-conflict reconstruction. The Secretary General was tasked with enhancing regional security and ensuring implementation through ongoing council oversight. In summary, the Iran-Iraq war's escalation into a stalemate was a complex and multifaceted process. The eventual adoption of UN Security Council Resolution 598 facilitated a peaceful resolution, paving the way for post-conflict reconstruction and reconciliation efforts. Chapter 4, Impact and Legacy. The Iran-Iraq war had profound and enduring impacts on both countries and the wider Middle East region. Economically, the conflict severely disrupted global and regional oil production, leading to fluctuating oil prices and significant economic strains in Iran and Iraq. Iran faced international isolation due to Iraqi attacks on its oil infrastructure, which further complicated its economic recovery and suspended its nuclear ambitions. Iraq struggled with economic collapse and bankruptcy post-war, grappling with prolonged instability and resource depletion. Militarily, the war introduced new forms of warfare to the region, notably through the use of chemical weapons by both sides. This marked a grim precedent in Middle Eastern conflicts, resulting in extensive casualties and international condemnation. Additionally, the deployment of long-range missiles shifted regional military dynamics, laying the groundwork for future ballistic warfare developments. Politically and socially, the war solidified Iran's ideological foundation under Ayatollah Khomeini's leadership, enhancing its capacity to mobilize Shiite communities across the Middle East. Conversely, Iraq's leadership under Saddam Hussein used the conflict to consolidate power uh, establishing a totalitarian regime that suppressed internal dissent and bolstered its control through emergency measures. 
In conclusion, the Iran-Iraq war had significant and lasting impacts on both countries and the wider Middle East region. The conflict introduced new forms of warfare, solidified ideological foundations, and led to prolonged instability and economic challenges. Closing Statement The Iran-Iraq War had a lasting impact on the Middle East, reshaping political alliances, regional dynamics, and international relations. Its legacy includes ongoing geopolitical rivalries and sectarian tensions. This conflict underscores the catastrophic toll of armed conflict and emphasizes the importance of diplomacy, conflict resolution, and international cooperation in preventing future humanitarian crises. Reflecting on this pivotal historical event, we can draw several important lessons. Firstly, the devastating consequences of armed conflict highlight the need for sustained diplomatic efforts to prevent such crises. Secondly, regional stability is best achieved through inclusive dialogue and cooperation among nations. Lastly, addressing humanitarian needs promptly and effectively is crucial in mitigating the suffering caused by conflict. Thank you for watching and see you next time.